Hi my loves, welcome back. I'm gonna do a big old vlog today. Just catching up with you since my big trip to America. I've got some bits to show you. I've got a haul of books that I bought in the US. I thought seeing as I was vlogging today, it makes sense to put it in here. I'll show you some new in clothes. I also thought I might show you the best of my book mail and also just say, hey. But first up, let's get ready. Um, and I'm really desperate to listen to my book, which I'm actually surprised at. I'm listening to The Story of a New Name by Eleanor Ferrante, second book of the Neapolitan novels. I read My Brilliant Friend. I think it must have been February 2020 and I wasn't a huge fan. I think the reason for that is I didn't really know what to expect or the book was different from what I expected. I expected it to be about friendship between two women and it is about their friendship but because of the world in which they grew up, sorry you guys are slowly moving, <laughs> because of the world they grew up it's quite um, a fraught friendship and there's a lot of violence in the book because of the violence of um, Naples and the patriarchy and all of that kind of stuff. So I thought it was going to be about a lovely friendship and it wasn't. But I've got all three other books on my shelf and they've been staring at me and I thought I'm never going to get around to reading these on top of everything else. So I thought maybe I would try to listen to them. Um, so I started listening to it yesterday and I'm actually really enjoying it. So I'm going to get ready, listen to this. Um, I did buy the um, KVD Beauty Good Apple Foundation Masters in the US and I still haven't used it so I'm going to use it today. So let's see how this is. Um, I've, wanting, I've been wanting to get this since it first came out. I hope I've got the right shade, probably haven't. ready for the day. I thought I'd show you a few new in clothing bits um, just to catch you up because I will be wearing them constantly. First up I tried these cargo pants on in Free People in Santa Monica kind of on a whim. Wasn't really wanting to buy anything <laughs> but I did see them and thought oh those do look nice so I did try them on and they are gorgeous. I did talk about them a little bit on my um Instagram stories, but yeah, just such a nice flattering pant on me um, and I love them. They're so comfy. I've worn them countless times since I got them. Um, I got them in a small and it is, it does run kind of big. I have to tie the tie up quite tight. You could also do a belt with these. They've got belt loops. Um, I also like to wear mine kind of mid-rise but you could wear them low-rise and I do think they'd work really really nicely under a bump <laughs> if you are pregnant. They got a lot of room in them especially if you size up. So yeah could I have done with an extra small? Maybe but I do think it's nice to have a bit of flexibility on that front these days. Um, so yeah and I did buy them in a couple more colours because um, I love them so much I can see them being like a full-on wardrobe staple so that is those and then free people also gifted me some bits so I'll throw those in too whilst we're here including this tee I've been on the hunt for the perfect t-shirt I think this one's very very close but yeah a lot of my t-shirts just don't work for me 
these days something about the shoulders i need t-shirts that will hit me more on the shoulders and this one is a little bit more structured it does hit me on the shoulders the, the material just kind of falls a little bit more structured than some of my other ones, like my Reformation ones. Um, also, it's short, so it works nicely with something like this, which is like a mid-rise. If you do a lot of high-rise trousers, you can tuck it easier and you don't have so much material. I also just don't love longer t-shirts on me that much. The only thing is, I do wish it was a tiny, tiny bit longer, but I also think that's a boobs thing. <laughs> so if it could be just be like a couple centimetres longer i would think this is close to the perfect t-shirt it's got a roll sleeves always flattering so i'm wondering whether it will kind of be even better and i no longer have breastfeeding boobs and then it'll be a tiny bit longer but it is almost the perfect t-shirt it is and a big improvement on a lot of the ones I've got in my wardrobe at the moment that don't quite work for me so let me show you these cargo pants in the other colors that I bought I would say they're probably a little too thick for summer um, they're a little bit on the thicker side but considering I live in the UK and it is certainly not warm all year round I do think they will work for me better for that reason these are just so good I saw on the free people website the reviews people were saying that these are not so great if you're really tall because they are shorter so they're good if you're a bit shorter like me but not so great if you are tall they are just perfection and these are the white ones just love them you know I can tell I'm gonna be wearing these for many many years to come and like I said just good for all the fluctuation at the moment with the tie waist it's just it's just very convenient very comfy like I said on my stories, I've been wearing these on days when I would usually be in trackies or something. I've been wearing these and they kind of, they look presentable so I can pop outside and do stuff but still be so comfortable. I also have a new dolman in this gorgeous brown. I've been wearing a lot of brown lately, don't know if you guys have noticed. And this is like my go-to jacket. I wear my dolmans all the time. That It's like, it feels very like chic mum to me. <laughs> so I wear my dolmans all the time and... Um, because I've been wearing a lot of brown, I really felt like I really felt like I would get a lot of wear out of this. And I love this colour. I it was a toss up between a couple of the browns, but really glad I went for this one. I can't remember what it's called, but I will um, write it down below for you if you are interested. And I also got this one in a small. I think I've got a mixture of extra smalls and smalls, um, but I do like the small size. A little bit more oversized, which I like. Last couple bits to show you. First up, these trousers. They're kind of like, if you know the Free People shirts I've got, the big oversized ones, same material, so that gorgeous like waffle material. Also kind of a really comfy combat style. Um, you can also turn up the ends, I don't know if you can see there's a button down there. And I also think they'd look really cool like tucked into boots. So love these, they're also kind of an unusual colour but still brownie for me. Um, so I've been wearing these again non-stop since they arrived. And also this gorgeous duster um so nice for in betweeny weather still it's a tiny bit too warm for it now but once we get to that in betweeny weather um this kind of thing will be perfect it's quite light um and unlined uh but it's a really really nice shape it's got a really nice kind of gathered back such a nice color as well so Yes, I've got some bits to sell as well. I really need to do kind of a wardrobe switcheroo, especially with a lot of the stuff that doesn't fit me anymore. So keep your eyes peeled for that because I will be selling some bits at some point. Um, but yes, I wore this, basically this outfit the other day and just felt very comfortable, but cool. That's my vibe now, as comfortable as possible. First of all, what do we think about this foundation? I actually just watched a sad TikTok. <laughs> It wasn't a sad TikTok actually, it was a very happy TikTok, but um, it made me cry. So if you can see tear tracks in it, I'm sorry, but um, it's nice, right? I like the kind of glow it gives. If you like your foundation to, to have a glow, it always comes up more potent on camera. So I don't look quite this shiny in real life, but it really has like, quite a nice natural finish. I think you could definitely overdo it, but... Um, it looks lovely on the skin. But let's do an American book haul. Um, I'm most definitely on a book buying ban. However, <laughs> um, as you'll have seen on my Instagram stories, if you follow me on there, I did 
Even though I was not intending to do the Man Booker long list this year, i.e. read the long list before the winner is announced, can't guarantee I'll be able to do it before the short list because I've got a lot to read in life. But um, then they released the long list and it is so good. I was just instantly struck by how good the list seemed, even though I don't have familiarity with a lot of the authors. There's lots of things they left off, which I'm just so pleased about. It looks like they actually read widely and intensively and picked, hopefully, the best books for the long list. Um, you know, it's never perfect, but I really did think the list looked good. So now I'm gonna do the long list, I think. I will do a video on that I think but I don't really want to buy the books in bulk because as I said I'm on a book buying ban so I think I'm gonna trickle them in um, slowly so that kind of messes up my book buying ban a little bit but yes why, why was I going with this because I'm about to show you a bunch of books that I bought <laughs> I bought a lot <laughs> I bought a fair amount of books in America there are some that I wanted the US copies of because I prefer them. Something about US book binding that I absolutely love, I think I've said it before, they're big, they're floppy, um, you don't have to bend back the pages. It is annoying that they don't come in like a standard size, like a British paperback, because you know, you can line them up really nicely. Um, you can see my shelves here are like the size of a British paperback, but uh, I do just love American copies. Yes, my suitcase was very heavy coming home. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Let's begin with these because they're kind of at the top. I've wanted to read um, Gilead specifically, but the kind of Gilead Quartet by Marilyn Robinson for quite some time. First of all, gorgeous. Second of all, this is Gilead. This is Home. This is Lila or Leela, and this is Jack. Gorgeous. Um, I think that's the order of the books as well. Wanted to read them for ages. I've read Housekeeping, as I've said before, on one of my American Lit courses and loved it. And these also get good reviews. Definitely Gilead does. So I've been wanting to read them for ages, and I really, really love the US versions of these. I won't go through the blurbs of literally every book here because otherwise we will be here forever but um, these books are set in like a, I think it's a fictional town called Gilead narrated by the Reverend John Ames who begins a letter to his younger son an account of himself and his forebears in 1956 so and I think it kind of follows various characters um, living in that town. Yeah I'm hoping for something quiet and impactful from those books. Um, let's do like kind of the sets I've got to show you and then we'll do the kind of random book. So <laughs> the first book I picked up here was Finch um, by Jeff Vandermeer. So they have not republished this in the UK. And it's considered like the third book in the Ambergris series. Basically what happened was, I think everyone forgot about Finch completely. And then um, Vandermeer released this big omnibus edition of Ambergris books, which I actually have, <laughs> which has Finch in it. Um, and then American publishers obviously, or whoever published this, who published this? Picador obviously picked up on the fact that it felt more like a series because I've always thought of the Ambergris books as kind of like you don't have to read them in order they're just kind of part of that world but obviously they decided to publish the three Amber major Ambergris books as a set of novels so I went for Finch first because you actually can't get it in book form here but then I did have to go back for the others even though I already own them because they are so beautiful together. So this is City of Saints and Mad Men, which as you know I've read before, and this is Shriek, which I read recently, um, and this is the three of them together. Do they not look gorgeous? So yes. Becoming a bit of a bit book collector in my old age, but um, he is one of my favourite authors, so I just felt like I had to, and then I also have to get The Hummingbird Salamander because it's kind of in the same style, um, even though I also own this one, so um, forgive me. I went to a lot of used bookshops whilst I was out there. So I generally got books by authors that I already had some familiarity with because 
when you're in a secondhand bookshop a lot of them are quite chaotic or they're like stuffed full of books and it's hard to know where to begin so yes i got a lot of books by authors i already know and love i got a couple of louise erdrich's books um i got the roundhouse which i've already read um and feel conflicted about but kind of liked it but feel conflicted about it <laughs> um and i also got the last report on the miracles at little no horse um which i haven't read yet she is an enrolled member of the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Indians and she's quite a prolific Native American author. So she's written quite a lot of books. I read The Night Watchman uh, at the end of last year and I really enjoyed it. I had a few issues with the pacing of it but I did really like it and I did really like her writing. And then I picked up a lot of Ursula Le Guin because I feel like a lot of it, if it's published here, it's in those horrible SF Masterworks editions which I really really hate um, and as you know I've been picking up basically all of Le Guin's work. I've got a very eclectic collection now. I've got some really retro copies, I've got some new copies, um, so I picked up some more Le Guin. Um, I've got this really nice, it does look a bit battered because I did also read this one and it got wet multiple times, but I got this really nice copy of The Lathe of Heaven, um, which is really, really, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think they've republished a lot of these books, or if they have, like I said, they're in those horrible SF Masterworks editions. We've got The Lathe of Heaven, we've got, I've got this very retro looking copy of Always Coming Home which is a different world entirely. So The Lathe of Heaven is like a um, standalone novel. Um, it's about a man named George Orr who discovers that his dreams have the ability to alter reality. It's a kind of strange little novel. So this one is also I think standalone. I'm not sure you guys can correct me if I'm wrong but Wikipedia said um, it is in parts narrative, pseudo textbook and pseudo anthropologist record, which sounds very Le Guin. It describes the life and society of the Kesh people, a cultural group who live in the distant future long after modern society has collapsed. But yeah, I got this really nice little copy of that one. I also got Lavinia. So this is about Lavinia from the Aeneid. So in this book, Le Guin gives Lavinia a voice in a novel that takes us to the half wild world of ancient Italy when Rome was a muddy village near Seven Hills. Um, so very intrigued by this one, a little bit more outside of the box for her. And I also got this rather lovely copy of the Annals of the Western Shore trilogy. Um, I really like these, uh, what is it called? Library of America copies. And the point of the Library of America is to preserve our nation's literary heritage by publishing and keeping in print authoritative editions of America's best and most significant writing. So this, I believe, is actually billed or was billed as a young adult um, trilogy, but it's supposed to be wonderful, just like her other books. Um, I think Earthsea is supposed to be young adult as well, but never really reads like that. Um, the trilogy opens with gifts in which Orek, Caspero and Gry Bar, a boy and girl from neighbouring clans in the Forbidden Uplands will receive both their family's domains and their hereditary gifts. For Orek, the ability to maim or kill with a word and gesture. For Gry, the power to communicate with animals, luring them to their deaths in the hunt. When they dare to turn their backs on their family's expectations, the young friends discover their true gifts. So, love this one. Really nice picture of Le Guin on the front there, looking off into the distance. Very excited to read this one. So, my Le Guin collection has got to be almost complete surely i know you sh i know she wrote a lot of books but we're getting there let's do more random little fun i can't remember what these are called they're like pocket pa paperbacks what are they called but i got trigger warning by neil gaiman mostly because i saw this cover and just thought how incredible is that look at all the cats um it's so cool and then i i bought it and then i was like hang on it's called trigger warning is it going to be Neil Gaiman having a small rant about the concept of a trigger warning? And then I read the introduction and it kind of is, I mean, it's not too bad, but it's a bit like, ugh, don't get your knickers in a twist, Neil. But anyway, it's, um, it's a book of short stories. So we shall see what this is like, but I enjoyed his short story that was in my weird anthology. So Hopefully it should be a good selection of short fiction by Neil Gaiman. And then I also got this, very, very random. It's called The Steers Woman by Rosemary Kirstein. Kirst um, another nice retro cover there. Look at that. 
Um, and the reason I got this is because earlier in the day that I was in this in the bookshop in which I bought this, which was the last bookstore in LA, I believe, downtown LA. But anyway, the day I went into that bookshop, I had read a article of books Joe Walton had read that month. I can't remember who it was for. I will find it and link it down below. I think she writes up little reviews of everything she reads on that website kind of like me so I, I felt a kinship with her but she said she really loved this book and um, that it was the start of a really good series and I've never heard of Rosemary Kirstein um, and I don't know I just thought why not it's here it cost me three dollars so you know we're gonna give it a go I bought Passage North by Anuk Arud Pragasam who I read this book on my Kindle and hate the UK version so I really wanted the American version I just think it's nice yeah I really really love this it's one of the my top books of the year I got one smiley just one at Paradise Gate um, it is quite hard to find some of Smiley's books and as you know I really do love her and I've read a lot of her books and will probably read the rest of her books. So I got a Paradise Gate. Um, in his bedroom upstairs 77 year old Ike Robinson is dying. Down in the living room his wife Anna defends the citadel of their marriage against the ill-considered albeit loving invasion by their three middle-aged daughters and their 23 year old granddaughter. Sounds very Smiley to me. So. Let's see what this one's like. Okay, continuing on. I got two Percival Everett's. After my success with Telephone, I wanted to read more Percival Everett. I found these, again, in a secondhand bookshop. This one was in the Catskills. <laughs> um, I don't know that they are his most beloved books. When I looked them up afterwards, I was like, hmm. They have kind of mixed reviews, but he could be one of those authors which I'm gonna put on my list of like, I wanna read everything by this author. But he's been quite prolific so it's going to take me some time but I picked these two up we've got American Desert um it does sound really interesting this one as American Desert opens the novel's hero Theodore Street is driving towards the ocean where he plans to walk into the waves and drown himself but on his way he is hit headlong by an oncoming van he sails through the windshield and although his face is unscratched and his bones unbroken his head is sliced cleanly from his body at his funeral three days later, he sits up in his coffin, the sloppy stitching that binds his head and body together clearly visible. The mourners are horrified by his resurrection, and the story makes instant headlines throughout the world. American blurbs are a bit like, you know when they put together those like three minute long trailers for a film, and you basically feel like you've watched the film. <laughs> They're always way too long. Um, but I'll leave it there. But it sounds very, very interesting. And then I also got Watershed on a windswept... On a windswept landscape somewhere north of Denver, Robert Hawkes, a feisty and dangerously curious hydrologist, finds himself enmeshed in a fight over Native American treaty rights. What begins for Robert as a peaceful fishing interlude ends in murder and the disclosure of government secrets. So that is Watershed. I also picked up Sea of Tranquility, um, which I have read, and I didn't really like it that much, but um, mostly for this gorgeous cover. Apparently it's a photograph. I was looking at the back. Isn't that just gorgeous? But yeah, didn't really love this one so much, but did love the cover. Do, do, do. Okay, last few books now. I bought two Annie Pools. Am I saying it right? Don't know. Um, and since buying these, I've just seen her everywhere. And basically in the back of my mind, as I said, I was really mainly picking up books by authors that I already knew. But in the back of my mind, her name was ringing bells uh, in one of these bookshops. And I realised after I bought them that she was the woman who wrote Brokeback Mountain. So I believe this particular book won the Pulitzer Prize. Um, it's called The Shipping News. And then, yeah, I've been seeing her everywhere. I've been seeing her name everywhere that I have been. Um, someone really recommended this on Twitter as like a nice quiet read, which I love a quiet read, as we know. At 36 Coil, a third-rate newspaperman is wrenched violently out of his workaday life when his two-timing wife meets her just desserts. He retreats with his two daughters to his ancestral home on the starkly beautiful Newfoundland coast, where a rich cast of local characters all play a part in Coyle's struggle to reclaim his life. And then I also have Close Range, which I didn't realise is the book with Broke Fat Mountain in it. Um, it's a short story collection. Do you know, I've never watched that film. 
so maybe once I've read this it's time to watch it finally. These are set in Wyoming, breathtaking tales of loneliness, quick violence and the wrong kinds of love. Each of the stunning portraits in close range reveals characters fiercely wrought with precision and grace. So that is close range. I bought one E.L. Dottero. Um, I've read two of his books and I really really like them. Um, and both were great. I've read Ragtime and I've read World's Fair. Um, so I thought I'd pick up another one because he was also everywhere in these shops. Brash 15 year old street kid Billy Bathgate has just become part of the inner circle of magnetic gangster Dutch Schultz. He enters a dazzling and depraved world of violence and brutality, corruption and high society in E.L. Dottero's masterpiece of crime, love, life and death. I also bought another, I haven't even read the trilogy that I've already got on my shelves, but I also bought another Robertson Davies trilogy, um, Fifth Business, The Manticore and World of Wonders. I actually think he's better known for this trilogy than the one I have, which is um, his Cornish trilogy. Around the mystery of Boy Staunton's death, Robertson Davies weaves a glittering, fantastical, cunningly contrived trilogy of novels, luring the reader down the labyrinthine tunnels of myth, history and magic. The Deptford trilogy provides an exhilarating antidote to a world where the fear and dread and splendour of wonder have been banished. So that's the Deptford trilogy. Finally, we've got St X, which I have heard a lot about, kind of in random snippets over the years since it came out. Funnily enough, this is actually a proof copy that someone <laughs> gave to a um, secondhand shop in New York, this one. I either think it's going to be really good or really bad. <laughs> um, Claire is only seven years old when her college-aged sister, Alison, disappears on the last night of their family vacation at a resort on the Caribbean island of St. X. Several days later, Alison's body is found in a remote spot on a nearby quay and two local men, employees at the resort, are arrested. But the evidence is slim, the timeline against it, and the men are soon released. That that is the final book that I bought. So I think I got a pretty good selection there. Um, mostly I've got a couple Canadians in there but all North American authors which I think was only kind of fitting. Um, so yes right I'm gonna stack these back up and then I'm gonna sort through some of my book mail that I've had since I went away and just share with you the best the stuff I'm most excited about. Probably next month I'll start reading for my next um, Sunday Times roundup. So I gotta start picking out some of my favourites now. Um, I will read the first few pages of more books than I'll show you today but I generally am able to tell a little bit which ones are going to be more appealing to me. These are the books which have my spidey senses tingling in my next roundup and they have come through the door. Um, one of the ones I will be considering is Psalms for the End of the World, which is the kind of quantum physics-y one, which I've talked to you about in a previous vlog. Of the ones I haven't talked to you about yet, we've got The Fish by Joanne Stubbs. A few decades into the 21st century, in their permanently flooded garden in Cornwall, Kathy and her wife Effie give up on their vegetable patch and plant a rice paddy instead. Thousands of miles away, expat Margaret is struggling to adjust to life in Kuala Lumpur, now a coastal city. In New Zealand, two teenagers marvel at the extreme storms hitting their island. But they are not the only ones adapting to the changing climate. The starfish on Kathy's kitchen window are just the start. As more and more sea creatures leave the oceans and invade the land, the new normal becomes increasingly hard to accept. We've got this one which is called The First Binding by R. R. Vidry. Bird even. I've got a lot of fantasy stacked up here. Something about this one just is intriguing me. So, blurb. I buried the village of Ampur under a mountain of ice and snow. Then I killed their god. I've stolen old magics and been cursed for it. I started a war with those that walked before mankind and lost the princess I loved and wanted to save. I've called lightning and bound fire. I am legend and I am a monster. My name is Ari and this is the story of how I let loose the first evil. Um, this is the start of a new series and I'm kind of intrigued by it so we're going to see. I mean you can't beat a really good epic fantasy but it's kind of hard to find the elite ones. I've got Dead Water by C.A. Fletcher. 
A waterborne blight hits a small village on a remote Scottish island. The residents are a mix of island-born and newcomers seeking a slower life away from the modern world. All have their own secrets, some much darker than others. Rumors claim the blight may be a case of mass hysteria or even a long-buried curse, but when the ferry service fails and phone towers go down, unease grows into nightmarish ordeal as the harmonious fabric of the community is irreversibly torn apart. We've got The Ends, which, first of all, I love the title being a Londoner. Decades ago, a vast object called the Anomaly was discovered moving through space. Missions sent to explore it found that anyone entering the Anomaly was unable to die. It kept moving across our solar system until finally the anom Anomaly enveloped Earth. 30 years later on the west coast of the US, Theo hears that his missing wife has been sighted in London. He's sick and getting worse, so he sets off to find her. Theo's quest will take him across continents, through abandoned cities and new communities, meeting with bandits, artists and cultists, and murderers and heroes and survivors. So that is quite the blurb. It sounds kind of unique. So I have got a Babel Proof um, by RF Quang. Is it Babel or Babel? I'm not sure. But uh, I didn't love the Poppy War, as many of you know. And I'm sorry to those of you who are fans. Um, but I'm hoping I might get on better with this one. We shall see. I'm sure I don't need to read the blurb for those of you that are interested in this one. But it's set in Oxford in 1836. The city of dreaming spires. It is the centre of all knowledge and progress in the world. And at its heart is Babel, the Royal Institute of Translation, the tower from which all the power of the empire flows. Orphaned in Canton and brought to England by a mysterious garden, guardian, Robin Swift thought Babel a paradise until it became a prison. But can a student stand against an empire? I'm hoping if this is not war-based, I might have better luck with it than I did with the Poppy War. Because as I discovered with that book, war-based books probably not my favourite. I have got Eden by Jim Crace. In fact, did I talk to you about this one already? I can't remember. Eden opens with a summons. The gardeners of Eden are called by their masters, the angels, to see a dead body. It is that of a bird, a creature who has strayed beyond the garden walls. The garden's inhabitants live an eternal and unblemished life, surrounded by bountiful fields, orchards and lakes in a place where the Lord's bidding is done. But outside, where there is poverty and sickness and death, this bird has met a fate that is beyond their imagining. So, very intrigued by this one. I know that he's been, this author's been shortlisted for, shortlisted? Shortlisted for the book before. So we shall see. This one sounds very intriguing and a little chaotic, maybe. The robots are coming to kill us and there's nothing we can do about it but wait. Gus Kitko expects to spend his final moments on Earth playing piano at the greatest goodbye party of all time before the last of humanity is wiped out forever. Suddenly Gus's swan song becomes humanity's encore as he is chosen to join a small group of traitorous mechas and their pilots dedicated to saving us all. So this one's for fans of music, mayhem and a truly epic space opera. A brilliant firework display of apocalypses, giant robots, gore, glam and non-binary music icon. But yeah, it's called, <laughs> I don't even think I read the title, it's called August Kitko and the Mechas, or Mechas? I think it's Mechas, right? From space and it's by Alex White. Finally, we've got The Dolphin House by Audrey Shulman, the last Europa um, editions proof I got I really liked, which was Lambda. Um, it is 1965 and Cora, a deaf young woman, buys a one-way ticket to the island of St. Thomas, where she discovers four dolphins head held in captivity, part of an experiment led by an obsessive Dr. Bloom. Drawn by a strong connection to the dolphins, untrained Cora falls in with the scientists to protect the animals. It looks like she starts to try and teach the dolphins human language. She forges a remarkable bond with the creatures that leads to a clash with the male-dominated world of science. Threatening to engulf the experiment as Cora's fight to save the dolphins becomes a battle to save herself. So, yes, very intrigued by this one. I'll write publishing dates for those down below for you um, if you're interested by any of them particularly. But yes, those are the ones I'm most excited about for my next roundup. It is most definitely lunchtime, so I think I'm going to have a little bit of pasta. Hi, my darlings. So, I have taken to bed. <laughs> Um, I'm really not feeling too hot. I, the baby's had a little illness the past few days and I think I might have caught it. Not feeling too good at all, feeling very weak. I've had my lunch and I've taken to bed because I just can't be up and about at the moment. <clears throat> I didn't sleep very well last night either so it's all combining together. So to make sure I don't scroll TikToks in bed, I think I'm gonna try and do a little bit of reading, try and get a bit of rest 
in my remaining childcare hours. <laughs> but at least if I'm reading, I'm being semi-productive. I'm currently reading Booth, which is, it's actually the second book I'm reading on the book along list because I obviously already read Trust, is a historical fiction by Karen Joy Fowler um, about John Wilkes Booth, or at least him and his family. And he is the guy who murdered or assassinated Abraham Lincoln. Very interesting so far, kind of doing the backstory of the family. Um, he himself was an actor, his dad was an act British Shakespearean actor who toured all over the States and the UK, kind of an eccentric family. Um, so really enjoying it so far. She wrote one of the stories in my big weird anthology, which I feel like I talk about all the time, but it has informed me of so much this year in my reading. But um, this one obviously isn't weird, but it definitely has, like I can really feel the style is the same. She has this kind of um, deceptively simple style and it's kind of uncanny and weird in its simplicity um, so it does have a kind of haunting quality to it and yeah I'm really enjoying it so I'm reading it on my Kindle because I actually got an advanced copy of this but the formatting of the advanced copy was so horrible as in because it's like in a PDF format that I didn't read it at the time but now I'm pushing through the horrible formatting um, to read it and yes I think it's also the longest book on the list this year so it will be a good one to read get out of the way nice and early so I'm going to do that try and get a bit of rest but not feeling too hot Just doing a little bit of clean up at the end of the day. Um, obviously was reading Booth, then came downstairs, been hanging out with the baby. Zach made us pasta as you saw. But yes, I'm just doing some cleaning up. Really liking Booth so far. Just find a historical novel like that quite gripping at the moment. I also think Fowler is writing the people really well. So um, obviously, well, maybe you don't know. I had to look this up. But John Wilkes Booth, who was the assassin, he was all about slavery. And his older brother, Edwin, who was also an actor, he was very anti-slavery. I like how the book is showing how two such different people can come from the same family. What are the like minor differences in someone's early life that might lead them down different paths? I think she's writing that really well, which is very hard to do, I think. But um, those sorts of little differences are really important to probably the way things did happen. You know, how two people with such different views can come from the same family. So I think she's writing that really well. Um, we're getting, so far there have been a couple of sections and they're sort of narrated third person but from the point of view of one of the children. So um, I'm liking that kind of take on things too. It means it's kind of switching up a little bit um, but you're still quite close to where you were so you're not completely um, starting afresh with each new section. So all in all it's just definitely working for me at the moment. I've just been chatting in our discord group about trust because I did find trust to be a little bit of a disappointment which I was really sad about. It's still better than a lot of books I read and have read. Um, it's like a good book but it did disappoint me in a number of ways which I'm so sad about because I loved In the Distance so much. I wouldn't be surprised if it's shortlisted still though because I feel like, I can't remember, I know that In the Distance was shortlisted for the Pulitzer but I don't know if it got any book uh, acknowledgement so I wonder a little bit whether Trust will get some of that acknowledgement because you know, he's clearly a really good writer, but it just didn't quite work for me, as I said in my review. But yeah, just having a little chat on our Patreon Discord. Um, I am loving the Patreon Discord and just having that set up and chatting to my lovely patrons. Hello, if you're watching, you will be watching this a few days early. All the tiers have early access to videos. I think I I forgot that I put it on all tiers and it totally makes sense for it to be on all tiers. So all tiers have access 
have early access to videos and also to book blog posts as well. We are chatting over there. I'm loving connecting with readers from all over the world. I can't tell you how much it has brought me. So, so lovely connecting with some of you on there. Um, if you want to join, I'll pop a link down below. Um, I'm gonna sort out the, um, a live Q&A time and date soon as well and our first zoom is at the end of this month which is so exciting um for the book club tier so so much exciting stuff happening on there and i'm absolutely loving it it has energized me so much I know it's not the point of social media from the people that own it's point of view you know they want to make money they want to grow their follower base whatever but the best thing about social media is of course um, connecting with others and I think I've finally remembered that and the Patreon just provides a perfect safe place for us to connect and I'm just absolutely loving it so I can tell as well that I'm gonna talk about my patrons all the time because they're giving me so many good book recommendations and so many things to think about so yes because I don't have that many people in my life who read as voraciously um, right now so like reading like multiple books a month sort of situation. So it is so nice to uh, combine all of our voracious reading on the Discord and really pick out some of the best literature that's out there. And I'm just, I'm loving it so much. But anyway, enough waxing lyrical about that. I'm gonna continue getting this kitchen looking a little bit better than it was. And then I'm gonna go up and help with bedtime. Okay, I'm back from bedtime. One of the things I do enjoy about parenthood, sometimes it's frustrating, but a lot of the time it's good, is that it really makes you be in the moment. On my best days, and hopefully most of my normal days, I really try and not be on my phone when I'm with the baby. I give myself a pass on days when I'm feeling like crap and I'm tired <laughs> because none of us are perfect, but I do try to be less on it and I do think it's really nice it makes you slow down like sometimes it is boring watching a little one because the things they're interested in are not very exciting for you as an adult but it makes me sort of take a breath and slow down and just literally be which I think is probably good for me also she's so aware these days that um, when I'm feeding her to sleep, I cannot be on my phone anymore, which is also nice. It's a bit sad because the room is so pitch black that I can't really look at her pretty little face, which I could do that all day, so that would be nice, but I can't do that. But I just kind of lie in the pitch black and just chill and hold her, and it's very nice and cute. Um, anyway, I'm gonna have a cup of tea. I'm trying not to drink too much caffeine too close to bedtime because I'm old these days and I'm breastfeeding so yes. That was kind of what the hot chocolates were about because I wanted like a hot sweet drink but I didn't want to have tea. Um, I can obviously have decaf tea. I should probably get some decaf tea, I don't know. But I've been having this lemon ginger and manuka honey one. And I've been enjoying it. It's got a little bit of natural sweetness to it, so I don't add anything to it. And it's nice, I like it. So I'm gonna make this. Uh, is Was there any point in me switching from hot chocolate to this though when I'm about to have a chocolate eclair? I don't know. But I've been thinking about this chocolate eclair since lunchtime, since I saw it in the fridge. So I'm very excited. Hi my loves, we are back in the bathroom saying goodbye to the day. I've just been picking spots, which I shouldn't be doing. My skin is super congested at the moment. I haven't really been taking particularly good care of it. And I feel like while we were away as well, it was a lot of travel. But yes, I'm gonna get ready for bed. And then Zach and I are gonna settle in and watch an episode of For All Mankind, which is what we've been watching for quite some time now because it does take us a little while to get through episodes. We do kind of one a night and sometimes not even one, depending on how the baby's sleeping. So yes, and it wasn't always possible when we were away. But anyway, we're watching For All Mankind 
really liking it. It's a very slow start. It's on Apple TV Plus, which I'm finding has some really great shows at the moment. My patrons know I've already talked about this. But yeah, Apple TV Plus it seems to just have a lot of great shows at the moment. They seem to actually be putting money into them, time into them, because For Mankind is a very slow start. Like the first few episodes, I was not really into it, but I had heard it got a lot better and it really does. Really great show. It's actually layered. The whole cast really like all the different storylines are quite well weighted like none of them are kind of filler storylines um anyway it's set in an alternate timeline where the soviets land on the moon first so the space race kind of continues um and space travel in general continues to be funded yes it's from the american perspective obviously um and it's really really good um i don't always love space programs i would say of all sci-fi things and i love a lot of sci-fi space stuff sometimes it loses me but this is really really good and I will talk more about it in a blog post I'm going to do, not when I'm tired at the end of the day, but I would definitely recommend it. But shout out to Severance, which is also on Apple TV, and is so good. That's probably one of my favourite shows I've watched for the last few years. So definitely watch Severance. Yes, For All Mankind is really good too, so we're going to watch an episode of that. Yeah, I'm sorry I don't have any YouTube footage of our time in America, but I really can't do more than one thing at once. I've said this before. I can either do stories, I can grid posts for Instagram, or I did little TikTok videos, which I'm still making some um, of our trip. So that was what my focus was on. And I can't do YouTube videos on top of that, like different types of video. And then we were obviously looking after the baby and with her 24 seven as well. And you all know I don't show lots of her. So I didn't YouTube a lot of America, but, um, if you are interested, I'll leave a link to my TikTok down below. Um, yes, you can see a little snippets of what we got up to. I'm still working on them. <laughs> but yes, let me know what you want to see on here. I'm going to do a book of prizes series. I think I know that's a little bit niche. Not everyone's going to be interested in that. But there is also house stuff coming. I'm going to wait for the kitchen to be a little bit further along. And then I'll do a big update on... Um, the house because there are things happening over there which are really really exciting i hope you enjoyed this little hello vlog from me i'm back on here and we've got a june july and august books video coming towards at the beginning of september as well so that's in a few weeks so lots of fun stuff to come but for now thank you so much for watching today and i will see you again soon bye